oil level looks good. Running a little bit higher condenser temps than I'd rather run. Somebody has balanced it at some point. Compressor two was also tripping on high head pressure. Nothing obvious is really standing out to me yet. It's like the tower fans are running at minimum. So far as I can tell, the pumps are being cycled by the controller. Not sure what's cycling the condenser fans though. One of the things that I definitely don't like is how it's staging. It's got a current limit of 89% and it keeps cycling compressor two. So the compressor controller is controlling the condenser pump. The automation system controls the cooling tower fan. But I'd still really like to understand why is it staging the way it is. And I'm thinking it's because of the current limits they have set in place. Our condenser water set point is 85, but I really don't like that. On top of that, if we look over at our approach on our condenser, we're running 114 condenser saturation with a 90 degree leaving. That's a 24 degree approach. That is not okay. This system is due for an annual maintenance. So what I don't know, is that approach value because we have a dirty condenser or is that because we have wrong flow? I'm gonna adjust the condenser set point down to 75 and get my compression ratio down. That's gonna give circuit one a little more capacity to maintain with. But you have to be careful with if you go too low, you can create an oil migration issue. Now one caveat to me adjusting that temperature is we have a pretty humid day. So my wet bulb is fairly elevated right now. So I may not actually be able to hit that 75. But the little bit of extra current draw that condenser fan is going to have is going to be a lot less than the extra current draw I'm putting on the compressors trying to run a 85 degree water to slow the fan down. That's the other thing I noticed that with both compressors on, our suction saturation keeps nosediving real hard and I really don't like how those suction pressures look. So part of my thought is if I can get that head pressure better under control, get our RLA under control, I may raise that current limit up above that 89% so that we can try to control the load off of just one compressor. And I'm seeing a lot of crazy fluctuation on the supply air temp and I really think that's because we're trying to control the compressors wrong. Trying to run both of them simultaneously and then having them stage off and on is creating crazy swings in the temperature. They definitely sound a lot better and they, the readings look a lot better as I get that condenser water temperature to pull down. We have an inlet coming in up top, we're pulling out of the basin in the bottom. When you have a setup like this, that means the water's pushing into the top, it's raining down and then pulling back out into the condensers. So it is very, very possible, especially being the fact that they haven't had their annual yet, that our tubes could be very dirty. I still have not answered though why circuit two is tripping high head pressure, but it is very, very possible that the high head pressure may be because we have a really high approach value. We're not heat exchanging on those condensers as well as I think we should be. With the lower condenser water though, we're able to pull less current and we're not hitting our current limit which was forcing us to stage up before. Plaint of circuit two tripping on high head pressure, given how everything looks right now, I think it's definitely related to our heat exchange problem. We can get in here, we can punch these tubes, we can go through this whole system, then we can take the time to make sure that the balancing and all that is correct. Max FLA. Let's go 95 for now. These are our evaporator coils, and it does look like these are interlaced. So if I'm looking at this correctly, you have circuit one, circuit two interlaced. You have a, and they're stacked on top of that. So you've got one interlaced coil, two, and then we come down here to the other side of our bank. And we've got, yeah, one, two, and we have, so we've got four interlaced coils total. But the key critical piece is they're interlaced. By one compressor running, I am running the entire coil bank. I also see that we've had an EXV upgrade at some point. So some of the circuits are driven off of EXV, some of them off of the old TXV. So I see circuit one is running TXVs while two is EEVs. I've got it running at 100% on circuit one. I'm gonna go ahead, release circuit two, let it come back online and let the system stabilize. Circuit one's enough to currently handle the load. The major thing that I've actually changed was I, I adjusted the condenser water set point, lowered that down, which lowered our compression ratios, which took loads off the compressors, which gave them more capacity, even though we've got poor heat exchange, which has allowed us to maintain so far. We're back at this built up system today and to kind of catch you up as to where we are now, the PM has been done, the tubes have been brushed, 
the pumps have been serviced and the tower has been cleaned. These tubes were not near as dirty as I thought they were. Honestly, they barely had anything in them. It means that we've got more problems than it was just dirty tubes and a dirty cooling tower. As we were doing the PM and going through the system, we discovered a few things. The pump set points are causing a delay for them to actually turn on. And what that was leading to is the pumps were not even engaging until the compressors had reached 150 psi. And the system was running the pumps as actual modulation. And so we were running a variable speed flow based off of head pressure. And I have verified the balancing, but I'll get back to the balancing in a minute. Right now we've got compressor two going with 108, basically 81. So we've got roughly a 27 degree approach currently. And when this one was running, we were right at about a 25 degree approach. As the pumps and the compressor was trying to stage, the pumps were not ramping fast enough to catch up with the compressor. It was causing some really weird head pressure issues that eventually was leading to a high pressure trip. So to fix that, I came into the control panel I don't have the software to reconfigure this thing, but I do have enough that I can manipulate what I wanted just by going through the set points. I lowered the pressure set point for the pump pressure. So instead of it being a 120 off, 150 on, I lowered it to 80 off, 90 on. Since I did that, we've been able to maintain constant flow on the pump and running 60 hertz at the drive. And that's exactly what I want it to do. I'm controlling my condenser water through my building automation at the tower. So I really want these pumps to just run constant speed. I don't need them to be variable. I can do the rest from the condenser water in the tower and the building automation. I've been running about a five PSI drop across the barrel. I do have enough push from the pump that if I just open that wide open, I will create a laminar flow. In addition to that, with these valves wide open, it's too much load on the pump and they end up tripping out at the drive, which is what I expected. They're not, you know, the more flow you have, the more force it's putting across that pump, you can move more water. So because you can move more water, it requires more horse. Any more that I pinch down to see if we could lower that pressure drop and reduce flow a little more, I start running higher head pressure and I'm not improving the approach value at all. I don't have the original pressure drop specs that this barrel is supposed to be. The tag doesn't say, and the project book doesn't specify it. Through trial and error, I've been able to determine that I am running the optimum flow that I possibly can on these barrels right now. I used a word here you may not be familiar with, and that is laminar flow. So laminar flow is when you have too much water flow through a heat exchanger. So we all understand that if there's too little water flow, then there's not enough water to exchange heat to take that heat away or to add heat if this was an evaporator. And so that's gonna cause its own issues. So you can have high head pressure by too little water flow. That makes common sense to our brain. You can also have high head pressure with too much water flow. When there's too much water flow on a barrel, what ends up happening is the water has so much force and pressure behind it that it is able to create turbulence inside of the tubes inside that heat exchanger. Now keep in mind, we're talking about a flooded style system. So this means that the water is inside the tubes, refrigerants on the outside. When that force is pushing through there, that turbulence that gets created on the wall walls of the of the copper tubing is that water starts to just cycle and circulate right there on the edges of the pipe and that circulation actually hinders uh, uh, heat exchange across from the refrigerant into the water. So you have to slow that water down to where it's not going to create that turbulence anymore and stop your heat exchange from happening. And that is laminar flow in a nutshell. This can happen on both the uh, evaporator and condenser side of the system. It is something to be aware of and it is also why it is very critical to have your barrels balanced properly. If you're suspecting high water flow in a laminar condition, your approach value is going to help you determine that. So if you're having a laminar condition and all your valves are wide open, you should have enough flow. You're going to have a high approach value. Low water flow is going to create a lower approach value. And so that's not going to, you're going to see the opposite result in that way. So that's one way you can determine one way or the other. If you've never seen a system like this before, this is a handbell compressor. These are our slide valves. So this is what we use to control how much load is on this machine. This is your condenser. We're flowing water through this condenser. We come out of the discharge line into the top of the condenser. From there, we come through the condenser barrel out the liquid line 
and then into our metering devices downstream. Back out of those EVAP coils into our suction of the compressor, and then the cycle repeats as we pull back through. The condenser water pulls out of the tower, pumps through our barrels, and then back out to the cooling tower I showed you earlier.